Thank you for joining in. Um, once again, there's a call network where we propagate the honor that was created with God. It's always a joy and a delight to have you around here, the word of the Lord, for us to share and um, expand upon the word. I believe that through the word, we grow day by day, um, just as we eat our normal food daily, and uh, we do not skip it for any reason. And the same way, I believe that uh, we have to pay attention to the word in these last days. Uh, David said one thing, that he has kept the word in his heart. Um, that he was able to make the statement that his heart instructs him in the dust seasons of life. And that is why we try to put the word in our hearts. We try to hear daily, read it daily, have fellowship like this so that we can grow together. And I believe that tonight is not going to be an exception at all, that God is going to use his men mightily to speak to us. We are still on the topic spiritual health, and I believe there's so much that we need to know. Uh, we visit the hospitals to check ourselves. Um, sometimes we're able to find certain things by ourselves and sometimes through scan and all that. Um, in all of this, you're just trying to make sure that you are healthy. In the same vein, I believe that in our spiritual health, there are things that we need to also watch and bring it before the Lord so that the weaknesses and the indiscipline within ourselves that is not causing us to be spiritually healthy will be dealt with. So I just want you to stay put and uh, the Lord will speak to you this night. Uh, without wasting any time, I just want to call our first speaker all the way from Kenya. We want to call Pastor Samuel. Uh, man of God, you are welcome. Hello. Praise the Lord. Um, I hope you can hear me. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for another privilege and opportunity to get to share God's word with God's people. It's a delight to be here again. Um, and thank you very much, Dr. Daniel, for the platform. And I pray that the Lord will continue establishing the paths of the called network to reach to as many people as we can for the purposes of the kingdom of God. And I am grateful to be part of this man's, um, you know, speakers who are sharing um, with regards to spiritual health. And, and I pray that, as you have just said, that everyone who speaks into this uh, particular topic will continue enriching our minds and our hearts so that we may be greatly rooted in the Lord, uh, our God. And so um, we want to thank the Lord. Uh, he has kept us well and he has been well to us. And so it is our delight or it is my delight that today uh, we shall continue with what has been a series. Um, and as many speakers have come before me, we have tried to elaborate and, and point us to, to true spiritual truth. And I hope that it will not be different for us um, tonight. And so. Uh, I would just call us to begin with a word of prayer, um, as, as I love doing uh, before we get to hear God's word. And so, Father, we thank you. Um, Father, we pray that you would delight in revealing yourself to us through the words of my mouth, O oh God. And even as we look into scripture, Father, would you please, O oh God, and reach us so that we may be spiritually healthy men and women for the sake of your glory. For this is our humble prayer of faith, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, and dear Christians, we know that we need to be spiritually healthy, and our job is to remind one another how to do that. But even more importantly is the question, why do we need to do it? And one of the things that should reawaken the need to stay or the need for us to stay spiritually healthy for every Christian is the fact that as human beings, first, we are prone to forget that our souls need to be nourished and the fact that we can easily get to the point where we think we are good 
where we think that we are okay and that we have everything figured out. And slowly without notice, pride controls us. And without a moment's notice, we get into positions we would have avoided if we had taken precautions at first. So that it seems then that the question why matters more before we get to the how question. Before we get to answer how do we remain spiritually healthy, we need to be reminded why we need to be spiritually healthy. Now, doesn't Peter, the apostle, in warning us and the people to whom he writes first, tell us, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Now, we, we might focus on the enemy and, and forget that even though we are justified by God and we have received the righteousness of Christ, we still struggle with sin on this side of the earth. As Paul presents us with his struggles, you know, Paul says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. And at the very end, he will end up by saying, O oh, wretched man that I am. There's always a struggle between flesh and the spirit. And that will always be there when we are on this side of the world. Or perhaps the warning that Paul gives to the believers at Corinth. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands Take heed lest he fall. Or let us not even forget that Jesus Christ gave the same warning to his disciples talking of the end of days when he says, for false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. And so what am I getting at with all these or where am I directing us with all this? That our spiritual health matters to us as Christians. And if we are not careful, we may greatly stumble and have great struggles against the chief enemies of the Christian. And that is again a scene, the world and the devil. Think about it. What strength does a malnourished person have so as to fend off any present danger to them, be it real physical danger or even disease? But you see, my dear brothers and sisters, many times we would tend to think that we are okay. Pride will crop in our hearts and we will get to that position of thinking that we can let our guards down. And that is the danger. And that is why it is important for us to take care of our spiritual health, because it is not something that we need once in a while. It is not as we do the doctor's visits once in a while to check whether we are really doing good or not. This is something that we need to do on a daily basis because the devil has not dropped his guard down any time. We are still struggling with sin. Not every year or every month, we are struggling even as Christians with sin every single second. There are trials and temptations that come about us and we need to be spiritually healthy so that we can be able to stand. Our spiritual health matters. You see, we are on a pilgrim journey and we need to gather all the strength we can by being spiritually healthy for the road 
in a world that is engulfed with sin and wickedness, where men and women openly rebel against God and his people. This road is full of many dangers, trials, and temptations that may drain us on the way to the city of God. We need to be spiritually healthy for us to stand against the evil of this world. For us to be able to go above and beyond the sinful nature that we struggle with on a daily basis. Now, I don't know how many of us have read the book by John Bunyan, The Pilgrim's Progress. But if you have, though the city of God shines very bright in a distant the man that John Bunyan uses in his illustration by the name Christian has endured through much struggle to get to the city of God. And along the way, what got him by strengthening his spiritual man. It is a beautiful read because it shows richly the struggles that a Christian that a saint will undergo as they are on this pilgrim journey, focusing themselves to get to the city of God. You see, our own church's theme, um, the, peace, the Presbyterian church this, this year has been drawn from Joshua chapter 24, from the very common speech given by Joshua to the children of Israel, as he neared his death. Now of interest to me is the particular response given by Joshua after the very famous words. And these words, everybody often says them always. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now to which the people of or the children of Israel respond by saying, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us all in the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Now, the words that follow are very interesting because Joshua says to them as a way of response, you are not able to serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. Now, the words of Joshua to many of us would really perhaps seem out of place. How would he tell the people that you are not able to serve the Lord? And I think the spirit of the Lord spoke to Joshua about the tendency of these people to forget and how they were so prone to let their guards down. Because my dear brothers and sisters, how then is it immediately we get into the book of Judges, the very things that Joshua wants them about become a reality? How does it become like that? Now, dear brothers and sisters, they had forgotten. These children of Israel had forgotten to check their spiritual health. And as malnourished men and women, sin prevailed and they were left for dead. Were it not? for the deep and rich mercy and the grace of our God. And therefore, what am I saying? That my dear brothers and sisters, our spiritual health is not an option. 
but we have to feed our inner man because we are weak on our own. And many times we forget how crucial it means for us to be spiritually healthy. We forget. We forget. And that is the great danger. We forget. It is a great danger to you and to me who is a Christian. And the very warning that Paul gives to the Corinthian that, you know, lest you think we stand and you fall. Because many at times, other times we have let our God down and without notice, and without a moment's notice, we get to ourselves and we realize that we have fallen and we have fallen. And it is at that particular point we start remembering that there is a point to which we have not strengthened ourselves. We have let our spiritual guards down. And so if you and I are really keen to the things that surround us in the world, if you and I are keen to look at the world and see how dark the world has grown and how evil the world is becoming, then our spiritual health is not an option, as I have said. Would you please get to the point of remembering or reminding yourself that it is important that we sometimes are not healthy as we think? That our inner man is not as strengthened as we think. Now, how many times do you and I find ourselves that when we are confronted by challenges in this world, thinking that we can be able to overcome them, sometimes we feel so weak and so downtrodden that we cannot do anything about it. Sometimes we shun away. Sometimes we hide back in our own weaknesses. Sometimes we even hide behind our own sinful nature, forgetting that it is just because we let our guard down. And so spiritual health is a matter that is very important for you and for me. Now, knowing this present danger then, knowing that we are oft to forget, knowing that sometimes we pride ourselves that we are okay when we are not doing okay. Sometimes when we are beating our chest, you know, it is very interesting because many of us who have been Christians for a long time, sometimes think that it is the rest of the world that needs the grace of the Lord more than we do. We take things for granted, you know, what be what was our first love, reading God's word, was, was our first love, you know, finding ourselves praying and, and joining fellowships, you know. When it was something that we often did because we were careful enough. Now we think that because we have been here long enough, we have been here, we have done that. We think that, well, everything is okay. Everything is okay. And so my question is, how many of us have been so many times deceiving themselves? How often have we been deceiving ourselves? And so it is a wake-up call for us to remember that spiritual health is not only for those who are beginning their journey of faith, but it is even more important to those who have been longer in the pilgrim walk of this faith. And so there are present dangers. Now let us get back to then the how or how we need to remind ourselves. Now, number one, God's word is our nourishment. It goes without saying that it is in God's word that we find our spiritual nourishment. Now, would you first turn your eyes even to the words of the psalmist in the very first psalm? In the very first psalm, he presents to us the image of a tree that is planted by the streams of water. And now the most extensive psalm 
again in Psalm 119, that is the longest chapter of the Bible, is one where we see David lay bare his delight in God's word. And now we there we find a man that knows how to feed his spiritual man, how to remain spiritually healthy. Now, yielding fruits in and out of season is not a guarantee. And every farmer knows it. For the only way to is to properly water the plant and to provide the right conditions for it to grow. Now, the psalmist is saying that we need to be like a tree planted by the streams of water. What does it tell you? That the, the, the word of the Lord, like a stream, is forever having the ability to nourish your heart and my heart. That it is in God's word where we find utmost delight. It is in God's word that we find delight. It is in God's word where our inner man is always strengthened. Outside God's world is a cold world of sin and rebellion. For God has fully revealed himself to us that we may know and understand what he yearns for each and every one of us if we are truly to belong to him. Our faith cannot grow unless we hide and devour and endear ourselves to the word of God. You see, going to where the word is preached, as we do here, as this platform gives us an opportunity to do, also taking up that word and reading for ourselves and meditating upon it is the great nourishment for the soul. We need to take up God's word and drench ourselves in it. The word is Christ and he has revealed himself to us and if we abide in him, we shall be healthy souls walking on this pilgrim way. We need to learn God's truth for ourselves. It is the only way to guard our hearts against the, the lies of the enemy, against the lies of the world, against our own philosophies, against our own beliefs. But it is God's word that is supposed to help us remain rooted richly in him. And so secondly, when we have the word, we obey God's voice. We do, not see, we do not only go to it to read about it and to be strengthened by it, but we should take the next step to obey, to walk whatever it is that God has presented to us. We must obey our master's voice. Are you only hearers or doers of the word? Now, repeatedly, Paul in his epistles encourages every Christian to either walk, to be rooted up, to be built up, to abandon evil, etc., which are all calls to obey God's voice spoken to us through the word. Remember the two builders Jesus presents in Matthew chapter 7? The one who built his house on solid rock and the world who built it on sand? Now, here is the thing. It is easy to build on sun, as many have done. It is like eating junk, and one appears to grow big quickly, but their health is compromised. Right? But we must then work out our faith in fear and trembling, following the shepherd's voice, and do what he says. For healthy faith, my dear brothers and sisters, takes work and effort, and it is not often pleasant as the eating of healthy food. But in the end, we are healthier than we could ever be. We cannot 
think that by eating junk, we remain healthy. We cannot remain healthy. We would seem or appear to be healthy for a while, but then we know that our health is compromised. We need to heed to the master's voice and take that which is healthy for ourselves. Taking the very truth of God's word. When we are chastised to do something, when we are rebuked, when we are corrected, we need to take it. And sometimes it will never be pleasant. And when we have often laid claim or we have often fell in love with in love with junk food when they are when we want to reverse so that our health so that our bodies become healthier the options are not very pleasant they are not very interesting in fact we feel discouraged but it is the only way into which we get to our healthy selves back and that is what God's word does. When we hear the shepherd's voice, sometimes his voice is not always going to be pleasant to us because to remain healthy, we need to remain disciplined. And it is not an easy task. We cannot build our house on sand and think that we shall stand. We cannot build our spiritual lives on something else other than God's word. For anything else we build it on, it is always going to be a sloppy foundation that has no root and eventually we shall fall. And so lastly, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to belong to a godly fellowship. For one to be deemed healthy, every part of their body needs to function. It is not that when one body is when part one part of the body is functioning and the other is not functioning, we cannot deem you to be healthy. But we need every single part to function the way it is. Now, for Christians, we are not by ourselves, but we rather also belong to a body. First Corinthians chapter 12. For our spiritual health to be complete, we need other believers for our proper functioning because we are a body of believers and Christ is the head of that particular body. There are so many people right now that are distancing themselves from the community of believers because of diverse reasons. And while we cannot be able to ignore those ones, we must belong to a community of faith where we shall experience God's love, where we shall experience encouragement, where we shall be corrected, where we shall find wisdom and even warmth for this Christian journey, such that when we observe other brothers and sisters in Christ, we shall be greatly encouraged when at times we feel weak. Because it is in the strength and the warmth of brotherly love that we properly function as Christians. Our spiritual health is not to be pursued in isolation. It is supposed to be pursued within the body of believers for that is how God wills it to be for us. And so let us find delight in these things for our spiritual health. Studying of God's word obeying his commands, and even finding a fellowship to which we belong to brothers and sisters, to which we find warmth. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as I end, I will turn to Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 16, because here Paul prays for spiritual strength. In other words, he is praying that the believers in the church of Ephesus will be strengthened, that they will be spiritually healthy. And so allow me to share that particular prayer, even as I end by reading that particular verse, that according to the riches of his glory then, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, 
may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let us remain spiritually healthy, my dear brothers and sisters. The Lord bless us all. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor Samuel, God bless you. Um, it was so refreshing that um, I, I just stayed still and kept enjoying it um you know um it's, it's true there's no way we can stay healthy um without the word we can't do away with the word we can't do away with fellowship and even when you hear the word it means that you also need to obey walk according to the word and that shows that the word has actually also had an impact in your life but it's one thing that you said that sometimes we think the people that we think we stand we think the world need a grace more than we do and, and, and to me, that, that is something that I will not forget because sometimes we think that we've landed and uh, we are okay and we are spiritually strong and, and everything is fine with us. But that is when we are actually bring the grace of the Lord to keep going so that we don't put our guard down. Because the strongest man fail, the wisest man fail, the man with a great uh, worship fail, um, so I don't know where you belong, whether the worship side or whatever side. Wh whatever side you belong, I just want you to know that somebody that was great fell on that side. And so we need to check our spiritual um, health at all times. And, and luckily for us, we don't need to enter into a health facility in checking our spiritual health. But th there are ways and means, just like you stipulated, that we can go to the Word, we can enjoy fellowship, and then we can check ourselves. You don't need to go and buy the apparatus and BP. No, God just has made everything available for us. That is how, I mean, God is so unique in his own way that my children, this is how you can check your health. And you see, whenever something becomes free to man, we abuse it and we don't even want it. But when you put a price tag on it, then people begin to cram for it. If cars become free today, cars will become one of the useless things on earth. That's how life is. So because God has given us life and salvation, he come for it for free, so we do not want to even bother about it. But if there's a price tag, then people are going to value it. That is our nature. But I pray that this word has come. May we have the wisdom to walk and seek spiritual health. Let's be sincere with ourselves. And you mentioned one word, which is lacking in the kingdom. Discipline. Discipline. Anointing will not take away your weakness. And sometimes you want to hide under anointing and you do not want to deal with your weakness. And that weakness will actually expose you. So during this topic of spiritual health, we pray that any weakness within us, seen and unseen, may the Lord help us so that we'll be spiritually strong. Like I said, not all diseases can be seen. Sometimes you have to go to scan. And sometimes even double scan. And sometimes they have to say, come again for them to do further checks. Whatever it is that is wrong with our life, may the Lord help us. What we are not aware of, we ask for strength. Our weakness that is not known to us, may God give us strength so that we will not fall by the wayside. Because all we pray is that the Bible says that he that endures to the end. No, he that prays hard. No, he that worship hard. Not he that fellowship had, but he that endures to the end. So it's my prayer that may God have mercy on us and may God help us that we'll be able to endure to the end. May God bless you, my brother. Thank you so very much. We really appreciate you. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad to see my big brother here, um, Pastor Abby. Um, I mean, it's, it's always a pleasure to have him. Uh, one of the pillars of the core network. I know he doesn't like all these things, but in this, indeed he is. So uh, without wasting any time, I just want to call uh, Pastor Abby from London. Man of God, you are welcome. Man, 
Amen. 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 Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Daniel. Um, and thank you, uh, my brother, uh, Pastor Sam Jiroge. Uh, God has been good. Uh, you know, I could actually fold, close up my note and we can just go home uh, because I've been so blessed by that, that word. You know, it's interesting, Dr. Daniel, you were saying just now uh, that the first, no, not the first, the, the uh, strongest man failed. Amen. The strongest man failed. Uh, uh, and he's, he failed in a very pathetic way. Uh, what's his name? Samson failed in a really pathetic way. Samson was so endowed with so much strength that they had to commission somebody. They had to sponsor a lady to go and find out. Because from what we can see on him, we cannot see any reason why he should be as strong as he is. Uh, and then uh, Delilah tried a few times. You would have thought Samson should have come to his senses and say, wait, wait a minute. You know, this is no longer a game. Because every time she said, the Philistines be upon thee, there were Philistines there indeed. Um, you know, so he's, he's had it a few times and, and yet he still failed. And then you just said the, the wisest man failed. Amen. Even, even in Bible study with children, children ask questions and say, how can Solomon be the wisest man that lived and then fail in such a pathetic way that he failed? Amen. So hey, we, if, if, you know, if that will not wake us up, then there's something else coming. You know, it's uh, just now thinking about even Adam and Eve. They were in so much opulence. If anybody inherited the earth, they inherited the earth. They owned everything. You know, they had no limitation, no restrictions. Only just do not eat this fruit. And when the devil came, you know, I, I like making this comparing with, comparison with Jesus Christ. When the devil came to see them in the garden, they were surrounded with affluence. They were surrounded with food. They were surrounded with everything they needed. Amen. And they still failed. Amen. But when the devil came to Jesus Christ, he, he was in the howling wilderness. You know, the Bible says the, the, the spirit of God, after the baptism, the spirit of God led him into the wilderness to be, to be tested by the devil. So when the devil came, Jesus was hungry. But when the devil came to Adam, uh, to Adam and Eve, they weren't hungry. They, they were in abundance. Because sometimes we think abundance would enhance and make us, you know, make us stronger. It does. If you're not strong on the inside, abundance would only expose that weakness that is already on the inside. And I like something uh, you said, uh, Dr. Daniel, about discipline. Discipline is what we all need, all of us, because discipline is what creates character. You know, that's what creates character in us. Character is actually what sustains us in where God is taking us. You know, anointing is good. Uh, the oil is good. It would uh, it will create that visibility. People will see us. But what's, what keeps us is the discipline that we already imbibed. You know, there was, a, there was a time that we, you know, we wake up in the morning and pray. There was a time that we study the Bible every day. But now there's so much pro 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 proliferation. There's a lot of uh, apps and you get the app, you get you get the uh, the word, you know, the, what is it called? The verse, a verse of the scripture sent to you by your app and you think that is sufficient. Uh, but, but Pastor Sam was talking about fast food. You know, you think that is sufficient because, oh, yeah, I've got. And sometimes we even sometimes when we even post it on our status or we share it on, on the social media, we think, yeah, that's me doing my my uh, my work as as an evangelist. That's me, you know, communicating the, the word of the because the devil has so much blinded us. And if we're not careful. Uh, will remain blinded because the devil doesn't usually, the devil doesn't have any ability over us. He just plays upon our ignorance. He plays upon our ignorance. And with that, it brings us down. Amen. You know, I like something that Pastor Sam said about, uh, about, it, about Pilgrim. You know, when you mentioned Pilgrim Progress, I, I was like, you know, something kicked inside because that was the movie I saw that got saved. Uh, in the early 80s, I saw Pilgrim Progress and I got saved. And, and uh, you know, that is interesting because I, I went back to it a few years ago because after that 
time. I've not read the book. I've not been. And I went back to it again, uh, maybe about five years ago. And I've got it on, in my library. I read it, read it through again. And it's such a blessing to read. We, when you think when that was written, you think it's written for our, for our day and age. Amen. Anyway, I was going to read a few scriptures because we're talking about spiritual health. Uh, and spiritual health is so important to us. It's so important to God. It says in the book of 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. I pray that you prosper in all things uh, and be in health just as your soul prospers. It says in Ephesians chapter 4 uh, from verse 11 you know because god lays down the the rules he's this is what i want for you this is my my heart's desire for you in in um ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 it says and he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers it says for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry it says for the edifying of the body of christ for the building up of the body of Christ, so till, till, till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. Because God has set the parameters. He has set the measurings. So if you are going to measure, if you are going to measure how spiritually healthy I am, this is the yardstick. This is the measuring yardstick. How do I align with the perfect, you know, the, with the perfect stature of Christ? How do I, how do I measure up with the perfection that we see in Jesus Christ? It says in First Peter, because, you know, because we're talking about spiritual health, it's easy for us to relate to physical health because we look at, we, you know, in in recent times we talk more about our diet. You know, we talk about, you know, this diet needs to be needs to be uh, something that is healthy for our body but beyond that we even now talk about what is responsible as you know what is responsible regarding the planet we think about okay now you know it's not just about eating this food what is this producing that food what does it do to our planet so we're taking responsibility for everything we're taking responsibility for ourselves we're taking re taking responsibility for generations that are still not here amen but uh, because of that, I, I want to look at diet because it says in the book of First Peter, chapter two, from verse one, it says, "Therefore, it says, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, all evil speaking." And then it goes to this this scripture that is so golden. You know, it says, "As newborn babes, it says, desire the pure milk of the word." that you may grow thereby. As newborn babes, desire. Do you know the first word I like to underst underline is as newborn babes. Well, you know, all of us, when we got saved, we got saved as newborn babes. You know, they, there's, there's this issue I see in the body of Christ, which is... Um, which is is common. It's not it's not in one place. It's all over. You know, we see people who say, oh, yeah, I've been saved. You know, I've been saved now for 20 years. But, you know, a, a while back, this used to, you know, I read this in a book and somebody was talking about the corporate world, how, you know, some sometimes some somebody is stuck on a job. And even though he spent 25 years in the company, is the experience he's had over those 25 years is just like having one year experience over 20, uh, 25 times, you know, he's had one year experience, but oh, he had it 25 times. So he might be, you know, beating his chest and say, well, I've been in this company for 25 years. He's only had one year experience. Now, when we throw that into, into our spiritual life, into Christianity, we have people who are saved, who have been saved for 25 years, but they've only had one year experience 25 times as a believer. Amen. Those are the kind of people Paul was talking about, and he said, he said, I, I couldn't even uh, speak to you as spiritual. He said, well, let's, let's read, uh, before I go to that, let me quickly read, uh, the, let's finish with this, uh, First Peter, First Peter 2, 
uh, two. It says, as newborn, as newborn babies, said, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If we're going to grow, he said, yeah, there's something, there's a diet that is necessary to grow by. And that diet, there's a diet for us when we are babies. God expects us to, you know, when a baby is born, I think we said this on this platform in the past, when a baby is born, when the baby wants feeding, he cries for it and then he's fed and then he keeps quiet, but he cries until he's fed because that's the only way the baby makes his intention known at that time. He cries for it. He said, you too. He said, desire it. You know, it's unfortunate that in our world today, it's so difficult for, in fact, you're bringing the food to the baby. The baby is kicking it away. That I'm talking about in the church. You're bringing the food to the baby. You're saying, this is what you need. You really need this. Eat this. Eat this. Otherwise, you won't, you won't be able to so you you won't survive but the baby kicks it away kicks it away and it wants something else amen but it says desire it amen and quickly because of our time i'll read from uh from uh first corinthians chapter three from verse two it says i fed you with milk not with solid food <clears throat> for until now you were not able to receive it you were not able i fed you with milk and not with solid food not because i think that is what you need but because you're not able to receive the solid the solid meal you know you can imagine somebody who is probably five years old or six years old and, uh, or let's even say 10 years old and all they can handle is milk all they can handle is uh is a little bit of formula you know you just you know, you mix it and give it, and then it's, it's, it's drinking from the bottle. And you, even when that person comes out, everybody will look at him and say, look at him funny, and say, what is going on here? But you know, the other side of that coin is that formula is not able to sustain the growth requirement that we have. You know, uh, unfortunately, you know, we think uh, we, need, we think studying the scripture belongs to people who uh, are preachers. We think studying the scripture, learning to, to hear the voice of the spirit, we think that belongs to people who are preachers. We think a lot of spiritual exercises, we think it belongs, but they don't belong to preachers. They belong to the believer. It's what a believer needs to naturally be accustomed to. Amen. Uh, we've said this on this platform many times, that many years ago when you got saved, you know, you, you were thought that you have to read a, a chapter of the Old Testament, a chapter, a chapter of the New Testament, and then a chapter of Psalms and a chapter of Proverbs every single day to grow because you had to grow. And many years ago, people would, you know, when, when you met people, it's not unusual to say, how is your, how is your spiritual life? You know, how is your, because this spiritual life is what actually uh, upholds every other thing because he upholds all things by the word of his power. If we don't have that word of his power, everything falls down praise god uh, i'm trying not to not to go too much into what um pastor sam already already went into you know i like something pastor sam has said regarding the uh the the body of the believer because there are so many things you would never be able to learn on your own not because you know for various reasons number one reason because you probably don't have enough time to go into certain things that is one reason another reason is god they didn't make it such that you will learn everything all by yourself. Amen. He has put, he has put, he has given gifts a man as gift in the body of Christ that he expects us to learn from. So if you say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm only going to, you know, I've, 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 I, me and myself, we're going to learn this from the Lord. God will be looking at you because he has already put that grace in Dr. Daniel. He has put that grace in Pastor Sam. He has put that grace in Alice. He has put that grace in Nanda. You know, and he's, he's put that grace in everybody around. He expects me to go and get it. Praise God. And he will make it available. He will make, he will make sure it's available to me. It's not, he said the word, he said it's not in heaven that you think you need to send somebody to heaven to get it. And it's not in the grave that you think you need to send somebody down there to get it. He said the word is in your mouth. Even the word of faith that we, that we preach, that word is already here. Amen. If I can get it, if if it's not, if they're if they're far away from me, God will make it possible. And you know, there's one thing. Uh, thank God, you know, I thank God these days, you know, that for various platforms that is doing all sort of things. But you know, that takes me to the issue of discipline you know, and discipleship because it's difficult to disciple some to disciple somebody 
on on a social on the social media it's nearly impossible to disciple to disciple another believer on the social media which means we still need the, we still need the local assembly because I see something, you know, uh, I, I can log in into a pray, prayer platform at 7 a.m. And, and you know, it, feel, it makes me feel like I've had, you know, I've, I've, I've had a really good uh, fellowship with the Lord. That is not, there's nothing wrong in me logging into a prayer platform as long as I know what impact or what, what, um, what that is serving what purpose that is serving in my spiritual life because that would never replace my presence in the local assembly and I, that is this is so important that i really want to stress it i met uh, uh i was speaking I, I don't know if i've used this as an example in the past i was speaking to a believer whom i've known very well and i i was asking so which congregation which congregation do you attend now and this person said to me no he said uh now i'm a member of the person the lady mentioned a congregation that i knew was not was not resident in the united kingdom amen so so i said oh okay he said uh, she said yes yeah. so i i log in uh, and i joined the service and you know and it's such a wonderful time and because because it's somebody that i've spoken to in the past about a local assembly i couldn't say much amen i couldn't say more but that is not unique with that person because we see a lot of that happening today that people will say oh yeah I did. i'm now a member of uh such and such congregation uh, and you know this, this, and 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 I get blessed. It is true that you will get blessed, but you won't get your full, total diet from that platform. We must always, we must always encourage the local assembly because when God is going to send your word, that is going to read that is most of the time when God is going to send me a word that will deliver me from from disaster deliver me from that will look that will take care of me he usually sends it through the local assembly now am i saying god cannot send it through uh the internet of course he can he's god but we must understand that the local assembly is so paramount to god it's so important i'll step on your toes you step on my toes god is building patience through it you cannot you're not likely to step on anybody's toes when you're on the internet but i will step on your toes when you come and we say physically i would you know you i will say things that you will be you will feel offended you will say things that will feel offended and then we'll walk through it through that god is is you know is building us into that holy house that he wants us to be so our spiritual uh spiritual health will not be balanced if we're not a member of a local assembly, you know, that is so important. I can say it many times. Our spiritual life would never, ever become what it's supposed to be without being active, active members in a, in a, in a local assembly. Anyway, because I've, I've said, I think I've said enough of that now. And, you know, I like, there's a, there's a scripture in the book of Matthew. It says Jesus was speaking to the devil. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Matthew 4, 4. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall man live. Our spiritual health is dependent, directly dependent on the word of God. And, and when you think our spiritual life covers and governs every other thing about our lives, and we, we, had, we, we had this in the past when we said there's no division between physical and with us believers there's no division between what is physical and what is spiritual everything about our lives everything about us is spiritual uh it says man shall not live by bread alone but by by every word that comes out of the mouth of god shall man live i need to make sure i have that word otherwise if man is not living then man is dying Amen. If man will not die, man must get the word that comes out of the mouth of God. It says in Hebrews 4, 12, it says, for the word of God is living, is powerful. King James says it's quick and powerful. It says, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the of the soul and spirit. There's so much in us that, that we don't understand, but the word of God will come and penetrate and divide it and show us. It will say, look, you're being carnal. You say, look, you're not, you're not measuring up. He said, you know, and when God judges us like that, 
is to make us better. Amen. He says it will divide between soul and, and spirit. He said, and you know, sometimes we think we're walking in the spirit, the word of God will come. He will say, no, you're being kind of, you're walking in the flesh. He said, I can smell your flesh from far away and you think you're spiritual. Amen. He says, he says uh, to, to the uh, dividing of the soul and spirit, he said, and of the joints and marrow. He said, and is a designer of the thoughts and the intent of the heart only the word of god will penetrate that deeply and that's what you know that's why that's why one verse a day that we get on the internet won't cut it amen we won't cut it that's why we won't, we won't learn to know god from one verse on the internet we must give a place for the word of god if we're talking about our spiritual health. It says in the book of Psalms 103 verse 5, it says, he satisfies my mouth with good things. And then he threw that. It says, so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. He needs to satisfy. This word needs to be sweet to us. He said, I found your word. He said, and I ate it. In my mouth, it was sweet as honey. That word, We need to find it sweet. We need to enjoy the presence of God. We need to enjoy studying the word of God. There will be some words that we'll study and we won't understand. Then we'll, then we'll come to the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit will begin to expound it to us. Amen. You know, so talking about spiritual health, I'm looking at, I'm looking, I'm looking in two ways. So you, you probably already know. I'm looking at the diet we, we feed ourselves because diet is what guarantees health. You know, diet will guarantee health, it will guarantee growth, and we grow by what we do on a daily basis. Amen. We grow by what, you know, you, there, there'll be times when, you know, there might be times, I think we said it in part, there might be times when you want to go to uh, a very specialist, very uh, sophisticated restaurant. Uh, but, you know, I you saved up and you went to a Michelin star you know, restaurant and then they served you those uh, artwork that they, you know, that they make in their, in their restaurant and you eat it and you feel, oh, wow, now I can take it off my, you know, off my bucket list and say, well, I've been to Gordon Ramsay's restaurant, I've been to uh, whoever, whoever's restaurant you want to go, uh, Jamie Oliver's restaurant, whoever the, the, the chef you like, amen. But that, we cannot grow by that. You know, we cannot grow by conferences. They're good. They're just like when you go for that restaurant meal, but you, you, you grow by what you eat on a daily basis at home, what you eat on a daily basis. Amen. So that is about diet. I need to make sure that diet is is relevant for my growth. You know, there was a time he said, he said, uh, Paul, Paul was writing, Peter said, desire the, the, the sincere milk of the word that may grow by it. Paul was writing another, in another place, a strong meat belong to those who by raising of use have their senses exercised. So there is a level, there's a level you're, you're fed with, with milk. There's a level you're fed uh, with solid food. There's a level that you're fed with strong meat because you can bear it now. If you're feeding uh, if you're feeding, uh, if you're feeding yourself uh, milk when you're supposed to be eating strong meat, you're deficient. If you're feeding yourself, if you're feeding on on solid when you're supposed to be eating strong meat, you're still not getting what you're what you're supposed to get. But every single one of us should get what we need. So that is one exercise. Uh, the second thing is exercise. The first one is diet. The second one is exercise. When we is is when that's what uh, uh, Pastor Sam talked about. He's talked about uh, doing doing what we have, you know, practicing what we have learned in the word of God. Exercise, you know, Paul was, was it Paul that said, he said, you need to exercise yourself in, into God, in, unto godliness. Amen. He said, he said, bodily exercise profits little. He said, but godliness is profitable into all things. Exercise and practice, you know, when we talk about practice and talk about exercise, sometimes we, you know, I, I like, let me quickly read this scripture. It says in Hebrews, Hebrews 5, 14, it says, but solid food belong to those who who are of full age, that is, those who by raising of use, by raising of use, they've used it over and again, by raising of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. They have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. The way we discern, you know, remember what we, what we read earlier on about the word of God. The word of God is what we use to discern good and evil. It's not the miracles. It's not the, it's not, you know, it's not the, the, uh, 
what do you call it? It's not the, the significant signs and wonders. No, it's the word of God that we use to discern good and evil. It's the one that shows us the intent of the heart. Amen. So by reason of use, they have their, their, their senses well exercised. It says, uh, it says reject in First Timothy 4, 7 and 8. It's about reject old, old wives' fables. fables. It says, but well, exercise yourself towards godliness. It's, when you exercise, you don't, you don't, you're not saying you, you already have it, but you're learning it. You're learning it. You're learning godliness. You're practicing it. You're practicing. You know, it said, it says, it says in first, I think said second Peter, second Peter chapter two. Paul Peter was talking about some people. He said they had their heart trained in covetous practices. So it's the same way they train their heart in covetous practices. It's the same way God wants us to train ourselves unto godliness. He said, practice it. Because when you practice it the first time, you may not get it right, but you keep doing it. You keep doing it. You keep working on it. And, you know, they say practice makes perfect. You know, sometimes, you know, you practice first, second, third, and then you begin to learn proficiency through practice. And one of the things that we're failing to do in today's world is that practice, practice to learn to hear the voice of the Lord. You know, it's interesting because we're talking about this uh, in church only last week. And I think we've mentioned this in the past and I gave an, I, I gave an example because these days people don't even think they can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, but you can learn to hear the voice of the Spirit and it comes by practice. And I gave an example I think I've given before you know i was working in a company and the, the lift was uh, sorry the car park was at it was basement so you come in you park your car at the basement there's there are two lifts that can take you to the to the floor you want to go and the lifts you know these lifts are not the modern day lifts that you can see the floors that the lifts is you know you can see the progress that the lift is making no it's blind you know but you press press one button and then the lift one lift will come the, the you know the the uh the mentor whatever of the lifts in the would would decide which lifts to come so i will come i will come in the morning some days and i will pray in my say god Guide me to the lift that is going to come down. You know, speak to me. Show me the lift that is going to come down. So I'll press the button. And then with whatever the Spirit has said to me, I'll go and stand in front of that lift, A or B. And usually, you know what? Most of the time, I got it right. But I got it right because I made it, a, you know, I made a choice to hear, you know, to hear the voice of the Spirit. And, you know, uh, uh, the reason I'm giving that example is because there's nothing at stake. You know, you can, if I got it wrong, I just go to the next lift. When the the next lift arrives. But and these days, we want to hear the voice. We've never learned to hear the voice of the Spirit. And we're talking about spiritual health. We've never learned to hear the voice of the Spirit on little, little things. You know, on should I should I fast today or should I eat? On on things like which direction should I go? What clothes should I wear? What what should I, what, in fact, what dinner should I make tonight? We've not learned to hear the voice of the Spirit on little, little things that has no repercussion. But we want to hear the the voice of the spirit when we come to life and death situations you know i i, I was seeing this scripture in a new way you know i think it's um uh ezekiel i will end i will end of the on this because of our time i was reading the book of ezekiel chapter 47 and it says it says he measured a thousand cubits and 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 then he he brought me through it and then it was the water was to the ankle then he measured another thousand cubit and he brought me through it. the water was to the knee then he measured another thousand cubit and he brought me through it. the water was to the waist and then he measured another thousand cubits it was a water it, were, it was a river that i couldn't cross a river to swim in and i said to myself for the first time the spirit was saying to me i used to i used to see that as there are many levels in the spiritual experiences of a believer which is true there are many levels it goes from the ankle to the knee to the uh to the waist and then to the river that couldn't be crossed because there is depth in god that we have never touched before but then he now said to me he said if you can learn to hear his voice at the ankle level when he's bringing you through it if you can learn to hear his voice at the knee level 
when he went, there's nothing at stake. You couldn't drown at the ankle level. You couldn't drown at the knee level. He said, if you can learn to hear his voice and see how he guides you at the waist level, he said, when you get to the deep waters that cannot be, you know, that cannot be crossed, then you will be accustomed to how he speaks. Because at that level, what he says to you can be, can be a difference between life and death. And I said to myself, well, I've never seen that like that. But every single one of us need to go through that ankle level and learn to hear the voice of the spirit. We need to go through the knee level and learn to be able to follow when there's nothing at stake, to learn to be able to follow when I don't think I need to follow, but I still, but I still say turn right, turn left, and I'm following. And I'm saying, Lord, do you really have to do this? It's only to the ankle level. It's only to the knee level. Why do you have to subject, subject me to this? He said, when you learn to follow at this time, then you'll be able to follow at the deep level. Amen. I pray the Lord will help us because spiritual health is everything to us. It's our everything. Uh, and the, the word I will leave with us is practice. Continue to practice. Don't give up patiently. He said we should through, we should be imitators of those who through patience, they, they patiently followed. They patiently followed. It took Abraham 25 years, then he got the child, and then God, after a while God said, give me back. You know, patiently followed. He said if you follow them, you'll be safe. Amen. I pray the Lord will continue to strengthen us. I pray our spiritual life will grow stronger and stronger. Each, each time we appear before God in Zion, he will take, he will increase our strength. He will build up, up. He will build us up in the name of Jesus. Our strength will never diminish. And as we continue to appear before him, we would continue this, the, the endearment of the house of God will continue to, it will continue to appeal to us. The, the house of God it will, it will continue to say, I was glad when they said to me, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. It is well. Amen. Thank you very much again, Dr. Daniel. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Pastor D, God bless you so very much. Um, we take some time to examine our diet and we exercise by listening to the word and obeying the word and working in the word. God bless you. And uh, I want to say one thing, like you said, the local assembly. I know internet is doing very great by reaching people uh, far and near, uh, but it's one thing about the local assembly. Sometimes when when Paul writes his letter, it's like, I wish that I come to see you face to face so that I'll be able to impart certain things onto you. There are certain gifts that reflect when you meet people. There are certain things that God has given to us. Sometimes God gives you some kind of grace that when you meet people, you are able to throw that light of glory upon their life. People can be going through a lot of stress by meeting you and just talking to you. It's, it's something that God has given to certain people. And all these gifts cannot be used online so uh, if you are here and you've forsaken your local assembly i just want to chip in this quickly that do your best and get a local church a very good one that will speak the one of the word of god and and fellowship with people it's part of us gone with the days where they used to have um, churches in their homes it's also part of the strategy for them to stay as one uh, so may god bless you pastor b we appreciate you and um we say that may the favor of the Lord continue to rest upon your life. Amen. Without wasting time, our last speaker, um, Reverend Aneje, uh, all the way from Ghana. Man of God, you are welcome. Thank you so much. I hope I can be heard loud and clear. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, pardon, we don't take the car challenge. It's been a blessing being on the platform tonight. Let's hear from first speak up as a son, Pastor what a blessing. I've been so, so blessed. Seriously, I, I wish we could continue for a longer time because it was so refreshing and uh, I thank God for this opportunity. Doc, I want to thank you for this opportunity to also speak because my concern is this very important subject. In a moment, I want to just share a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this great opportunity you've given us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for faith and we thank you for the truth of your word that comes to us every time to edify us. It's our prayer, Lord, that as we delve into this truth, you help us, you empower us, you open our eyes to see what you want us to see concerning the subject. To the end, 
And Father, I will be edified and we can serve you better and your name will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Right. Thank you once again for this opportunity. I want to go straight to the definition of spiritual health. Yeah, as I have, I have it here. I believe that this is a very, one of the most important things to discuss as a body of Christ now. And I say this because we are in a dispensation where we are confusing spiritual muscles for spiritual health. Yes. The body of Christ is applauding people with spiritual muscles and think they are spiritually healthy. And that's why every now and then we tend to be disappointed when we hear that a certain man of God, a certain anointed man of God failed. Why? Because we thought the person was healthy. Only to know that he only had some muscles, but wasn't that healthy. Yes, because there's a difference between having muscles and being healthy. You can have muscles and not be healthy. There are people at the gym every now and then who have issues with their internal organs. So being spiritually masculine and having muscles in the spirit does not make you spiritually healthy. Yeah. And I want to go into some few things here. By, by definition, I found out that spiritual health is a dimension of human wellness, total human wellness, that integrates all dimensions of health, physical, emotional, mental, social, spiritual. It's the totality of the wellness of a person. Why? Because man is a spirit. Man is a spirit. So if man is spiritually healthy, it impacts every other area of man's life. It takes a spiritually healthy person to appreciate the need to have his body also well. Why? Because they appreciate that the body is the temple of God and must be kept well. It takes spiritual health to have that appreciation. It takes spiritual health to appreciate that your soul needs wellness. Why? Because we submit to the truth that be anxious for nothing. There should not be anxiety. And the soul is your will, your emotions, your intellect. And so a spiritually healthy person has soundness all around him. And that is why as believers, it is necessary and important that we pursue spiritual health above all else. And when we talk about health, it's, it's, you see, the thing about health is that you can look healthy and not be healthy. I've had instances of seeing people who went to the hospital to donate blood, only to be told that they themselves need blood. But they thought they were big enough. They thought that they looked healthy. They, they thought that walking about, wow, I, nothing shows I need the blood until there was a check. Until there was a check on them. Then they realized that, no, they really were not as healthy as they thought, because health is measured within some ranges and parameters. Yeah, if we say your kidney is healthy, it should fall between a certain acceptable range for us to say it's healthy. If we say somebody has a good blood pressure, it should fall within a certain acceptable range for us to say the person's blood pressure is, is normal. If we say somebody ha has blood enough, a male has a certain range that you have to fall in. I'm talking about ranges that measure the health of people. As believers, the range that measures our health, the standard is the man called Jesus. The standard is the man called Jesus. At any point in time, when we are measured against him, that is the proof of our health state. At any state we find ourselves, when we are measured against his conduct, his principles and his practices, it is what reveals our health state. And so I want to watch this, but will Christ use his eyes to watch it? Bible says that the eyes of God are too pure to behold iniquity. At every point in time, your health state, your spiritual health, is measured against the standard called Jesus Christ. I want to move on to say some few things here. And so, like I mentioned earlier on, Many believers today, we confuse ourselves to see spiritual muscles as spiritual health. The other day, no, the other day, Jesus was with his disciples. And the Bible says that he was with James and John. And they said, these people have denied us access to the city. 
Why should they deny you Jesus? Should we call down fire? Should we call down fire? And he said to them, no. You have not understood the scriptures that I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And he said, you don't know the spirit you are made of. <laughs> you don't know the spirit you are made of. People of God, that the spirit we are made of does not go about bullying people with our power. No. What do we see in our churches today? That to prove that we are spiritually powerful, we want to kill everybody that causes us for getting salvation. Spiritual health will consider mercy and not sacrifice. And so, listen to all the people that have spoken so far and go to God's word. There are some three things I want to point out here that are necessary for our spiritual health. In fact, generally, if you're looking at natural health, what you intake, your environment, and what you do with your body, these three main things impact on your health. And I think most of the speakers have already spoken about it. I just also want to place a little emphasis on it. Number one is the word of God. Number one, the word of God. A key component in our health. Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I mentioned earlier on that if your, your organs are tested and they don't fall within a certain range, of accept acceptance, you are considered unhealthy. Other versions say that this is your acceptable worship. People of God, that one major thing that gives us health spiritually is that we must submit our bodies as living sacrifices. We must present our bodies. That it is not by force. You have to present yourself. I'm presenting my eyes. I'm presenting my ears. I'm presenting my hands. I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, that I will prove the will of God. Then verse 2 says this, and be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That the way by which you and I can be spiritually healthy is that our conduct is guided and guarded by the word of God. Our conduct is guided and guarded by the word of God. That the practices of Jesus becomes the principles we live our life by. That the practices of Jesus become the pattern we govern our life by. His word. His word. Not a popular speech, but his word. That we begin to feed on the word of God. That we delve deep into the word of God. I thank God every now and then that we get this opportunity. When we feed on God's word on the core network, this is how we become spiritually healthy. Most of the time, it's not a thing that we hear. It does not sound good to us. It does not feel good to us. It comes so sharp to rebuke that God's word. It comes so sharp to correct. There are a lot of medication that we take at the hospital. We would have never wanted to take it. But for good health, we go for it. But for good health, People of God, that is the word of God. It's God's word that confronts us so that we can be corrected. We need the word of God more than ever before in our generation because there are a lot of things that are coming about that sounds right. They sound logically good. But is it God's word? Is it God's word? It says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. If we will be healthy, there must be a transformation inside. And that transformation starts with God's word. What principles are guiding us? What is it? Is it my church's creed or God's word? Is it my bishop's word or God's word? It is God's word. Let's be transformed. Be transformed. Number two. Number two thing that will ensure health. Like I said earlier on. You see, most of the times we can be walking about and we don't know that we are not well. Yes. Because we, nothing shows. There are many people who just walk and they fall. They never knew they had a heart problem. They've been working every time. 
This guy is a workaholic. He's so active that they just fall down. It's God's word that will now begin to check us and correct us and begin to point out some things to us. Number two thing that will help us to be able to live a spiritually healthy life is called prayer. Prayer. I want to show us something in the book of Psalms. Thessalonians, sorry. First Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 23. First Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 23. The Bible says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. And may your whole spirit and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and will do it. This is the prayer that may, the God, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through and may your whole spirit soul and body be kept blameless wow that sometimes eh, we might not even know where we are ever but it is in prayer like david said search me search me look into me there might be things you think you are doing right but you are actually wrong search me father open me up to myself let me see me Show me where pride is hiding. Show me where lust is hiding. Show me where unforgiveness is hiding. Show me where bitterness is hiding. Show me where resentment is hiding. Show me, show me. It's in prayer that he will begin to show you that, no, you are erring in this area. The church needs to come to a place where we begin to pray again. Father, correct me. Work on me. Bible says it is God that worketh in us both to will and to do. In all humility, I want to submit, this spiritual work, it goes beyond our resolve. It goes beyond our resolve. Yes, we can be so determined to do right, but we need a certain empowerment from above. Bible says, He will lead me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. If you don't help me, Lord, I will fail and I will fall. We need to come to a place where our online prayers are also about, Father, I hold my hand. Hold my hand. Guard me with your jealousy. Jude 24. Unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him who is able to keep us from falling. This is so serious, people of God. Because there are many of us that are walking in a way that we think we are right. But we may be very wrong. It is prayer that reveals you to you. That real you. When you begin to communicate with God and it begins to show you, you are weak in this area. You need help in this area. It is in prayer that our bodies are mortified. Oh, yeah. It's in prayer that our spirit receives empowerment over our bodies. In the prayer, Bible says in Matthew, watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. Watch and pray. It's not enough to be vigilant. It's not enough to be careful. Add prayer to it that he enter not into temptation. Then he says something very interesting there, and I want to take it this other way. He says, For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And for me, that's how I want to look at it. That anytime the flesh is weak, the spirit becomes willing. Oh, yes. That if we starve the flesh, the spirit is empowered to do right. It's in prayer that the flesh is starved for the spirit to become willing. It's in prayer that our flesh is mortified for our spirit to gain power. The church needs to come back to a place of prayer. Work on me, Lord. Work on my pride. Work on my pride. When I hear somebody is doing well, my first reaction is that why, why is it not me? Today we are competing with churches. Which church is more beautiful? Mercy on us. Father, work on me. Work on our pride. Why did he talk to me this way? Work on me. Kill this body for me. Paul said, I die daily. Prayer. Prayer is one sure way that the body of Christ can return to a place of health. Of health. Number three. Number three. I mentioned it in person. I want to mention it again. Vigilance. Vigilance. 
And by then, I want to say that people of God, you see, there are so many things that we could escape if we were watchful enough. If we were watchful enough. If there are many people that are in the hospital today, that if they had paid attention to some things, it wasn't as if they didn't know, but they didn't pay attention to it. When it comes to the sin of last, he said, flee. Flee. We need to come to a place where we are vigilant. Oh, yes. Vigilant is one of the ways by which the body of Christ can be healthy. Let's not be careless. Let's not be careless. I repeat, let's not be careless. We cannot be playing with the world and remain right. Let's be vigilant. Why am I saying this? Bible says this. Bad company corrupt good morals. I would have thought that our, our good character will rather impact bad company, but no, that's not the case. He says bad company corrupts good morals. Don't think yourself so strong. Samson was stronger. Don't think yourself so strong. David was a man of the boss heart. He fell by walking on the balcony. Do not think of yourself so highly spiritual. Be vigilant. When you see the red flag, be vigilant. Be vigilant. The things we pay attention to, the things we indulge in, the church is becoming worldly. Oh my God. We are becoming worldly. In an attempt to attract people, we are compromising in many ways. Be vigilant. Remember, so he says, remember from the where, the highest where you have fallen. Return to your first love. We can see. You used to pray some time ago so well. What has happened now? Be vigilant. There's some things you have left to some people. Oh, I've outgrown this. I've outgrown this. Man of God, I've outgrown going on with evangelism. One on one, I've outgrown it. Really? Be vigilant. Watch it. Be vigilant. When last did you yourself step out to do outreach? Be vigilant. If, if, if fasting is not declared by the church, you don't fast. Be vigilant. I like what the man of God said. He said, discipline. Discipline. Many cases in the hospital could have been avoided by discipline. And I'm saying, let's be vigilant. The church needs to open our eyes. Watch and pray. I'm a pastor. I counsel people many times. But you see, I'm so careful even in counseling. Even in counseling, the opposite sex in my office. I don't know, like, I'm so anointed, nothing will happen. No, I don't trust myself too much. My confidence is not in my, my, my resource. My confidence is in the grace of God to keep me. But I watch it. I'm vigilant. So to stay healthy. Number four. Number four. One other thing that will keep us healthy. Number four. It's fellowship. It's fellowship. I want to read some few things here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's fellowship. The Bible says, iron sharp as iron. We need to come to a place where we can boldly look at each other and correct each other. It says, confess your sins one to another. There are many times that even the doctor does not treat himself. Another doctor will treat you. We need to fellowship. What we are doing on this platform is called fellowship. Behind the scenes, we call each other to correct each other, to encourage each other. You need people to be able to watch out for you. I say, my brother, this path you are treading is dangerous. Be careful. We need fellowship. We need fellowship to be encouraged. We need fellowship. Most of the time, people go to the gym not because they cannot buy the things and work out in, in their homes. But to be there to see a gentleman who had a, a pot belly working like me, also have pot belly. It's encouraging enough. Yes. It's encouraging enough. You are not in this alone. It gives you a certain energy. Fellowship is one way of staying healthy. It's one way of being spiritually well. And that is one of the reasons why the church needs to be so united now. We are not in to compete with each other. We are here to complement each other. And to and to and to perform an agenda, economic agenda. And that's the reason why we need to be one, to fellowship. I like what the man of God said that beyond these platforms, 
have a local assembly where they can know you. Where they can know you. Yes. Because here, yes, you see my face, but you don't know me. You don't even know what I'm wearing, my trousers. You don't know. You have no idea. But those here with me know whether I'm wearing the slippers or not. Proximity is necessary for a certain dimension of correction. Fellowship. Submit yourself to each other. Uh, even in, in the political world, they call something peer review. Don't clap for yourself too early. Fellowship with others. Let people be able to look into you and tell you. You see, Bible says something there. I want to look at. I want to read this verse. These, pardon me, my, my glasses. Oh, mercy on my head. Father, help me. Matthew 26, verse 41. No, not that. Just a moment. Just a moment. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Shut up, Thank you. First, listen to 5, verse 25. It says, brothers, brothers, pray for us. Brothers, pray for us. I just love that statement. I, I, I want to call on Dr. Daniel. Dr. Daniel, pray for me. Brothers, pray for us. I'm going through this thing. Pray for me. I'm battling with this error. Pray for me. Brothers, pray for us. Can we call on each other for prayer? Brothers, pray for us. We need to stand with each other in prayer. And pray for my brother that he will not fall. Your fall will not be my lifting. Pray for us, brothers. Pray for us. The church needs to come to a place where we fellowship. And I want to say this finally. I just have to check in my spirit. And one of the things that will help us to live spiritually well, a spiritually healthy life, is to guard our hearts. But Bible says, out of it are the issues of life. It's to guard our hearts. The motives of men are weighed by God. It's to guard our hearts. There are many things we think we are doing so right, but the heart for which we are doing it, the heart is to guard our heart. That is where life is coming from. We need to come to a place where our hearts are guarded. So that someday we will not stand before God and we will call us a castaway. I did this in your name. I did that in your name. But the heart, the heart, the heart is to guard our heart. My prayer tonight is that we will come to the place where we realize that one of the most important things in our journey with God is to be spiritually healthy. I found an event and I want to end by saying that that really it struck my heart. And I'm ending with this verse. And I'm ending with this verse. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, help me. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Let me read it. It says this. It says, if your hand causes you to sin. I want to find it. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eyes causes you to sin, plug it out. I, I've written it here. I want to find it. But if your hand causes you to sin, Cut it off. If your eyes cause you to air, block it out. That spiritual health is so important to God that if you find a disease in any part of your body, he expects you to amputate it. That's how serious it is. That if you find any part of your body that will cause you to remain in sickness, he said, cut it off. Cut it off. The Bible says, offer the members of your body. You must present your body everyone now and then. The Father, hold this in check for me. If I find a problem with any part of my body, says, remove it. It is better to enter heaven without that eye than to get to hell with it. That's how serious it takes your spiritual health. It's not about looking good. The muscular person does not want any part of the body to be lost. But the one who needs health, who considers health above everything, does not mind losing an arm to make it to heaven. My plan for my submission to us tonight is that let us accept that part, the place of health, holds a, a, a total wellness from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, that we submit ourselves to God. The Father, look at me. Look through me. I offer the members of my body to you. Let your word be rich in me. Watch me with your word. Watch me with your eyes. Correct me where I'm wrong. Prompt me. Direct me the way to go. If there is any part of me that is causing me to err, cut it off. If it's about a certain friendship, Father, cut it off. 
We need to come to that place. And I believe strongly that God is bringing us to that dimension of wholeness. And it happens when you and I submit ourselves to his total leadership. May the Lord help us continually on this platform. May he empower us on a daily basis. And when he comes, may we stand before him faultless and blameless. A people who are whole. A people who are well. Not just carrying muscles, but carrying health. Healthy enough to look like him. Healthy enough to meet up to his standard. Healthy enough to act like him. May our health be made whole by the one who pledges us completely. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, we've had a wonderful time this uh, this evening. Uh, Pastor Samuel, Pastor Abby, uh, Reverend and AJ, it's, it's been such an awesome time. Uh, we are so refreshed with the word. Um, there's been a word of caution. And uh, I believe that is what the Lord wants us to hear, that we should be vigilant. I mean, I said so much, uh, but this uh, is my take home that we should be vigilant uh, because in these days and this time, the enemy is after us. Um, if you are standing, still be vigilant. If you are working hard for the kingdom, still be vigilant. Whatever is your position, still be vigilant because the enemy is looking for people to destroy. Anyone that stands as light, and bring souls to the kingdom has become the target of the enemy. You might think that you, you are not doing so much, but a little light that you show in your community, in your workplace, is drawing people to Christ, and the enemy is not happy about it. Let's be vigilant. Because when you look at your muscles, it means that you are just looking at the outward appearance of things. But then when your focus is the heart, it means that you are looking at what cannot be seen. And that is how a man taps into the things of God. And I want to tell you that God bless you for everything that you are doing for the kingdom. May God continue to strengthen you, give you the grace to keep pushing for the kingdom. I know that it's, we are in difficult times, perverse times, but I want you to be encouraged that whatever the Lord has entrusted you with, just keep going because surely he will see you through. May the, may the Lord bless you and keep you and may his favor shine upon you. For all the speakers that, that got time and, and, and sought the face of God to give us this wonderful message, we want to say God richly bless you and may wisdom be multiplied unto you, understanding be given unto you, the knowledge of his will be granted unto you so that you be a blessing to many and many people. We also thank all our audience and everyone that will be watching later. It's our prayer that the tablets of your hearts will be prepared all the time by the Lord, that as you hear the word, you become doers of, of the word, so that we'll be able to stand firm and to give an account of the life that the Lord has given unto us. Once again, stay blessed and highly favored, and I know we are going to meet again next week by the grace of the Lord. Thank you. And God bless you all.